Hi guys and welcome to the second part of the online lecture series for evidence-based practice um, in ATR 387, orthopedic examination of lower extremity injuries. This part of the lecture will focus on developing a usable clinical question using the PICO format and we'll talk about what the PICO format is throughout the entire lecture. But before forming a clinical question, um, it's really helpful if you identify a problem patient in a clinical rotation or a clinical problem that you may have interest in within your particular allied healthcare field. By identifying a problem in your area of interest, this will help drive and formulate your clinical question, not just for this class and the critical appraisal topic paper, but also just in life. Um, as aspiring clinicians, I can only imagine that you have at least one or two questions that have arisen as you've observed clinicians working with patients. Um, and these curiosities are important because they really help form some of the most important clinical questions that have been answered in the research literature. So now that you've taken maybe a moment to think about a few patient cases, let us really truly explore um, and dissect the, the PICO question or the PICO format. The PICO is a mnemonic that has been used in evidence-based practice to develop well-focused clinical questions, and it's based upon four major components to be discussed throughout the lecture. Using this format not only helps you as a student um, and as a clinician when you become one, form well-focused clinical questions, but you will also find that it will help narrow your search results and it will yield higher quality articles, which will really make writing your critical appraisal topic paper easier. So let us start by examining the, the four major components of, of the PICO. So the first step in the PICO process of forming um, a well-focused clinical question is, is the P, and the P can stand for um, a patient, uh, it could stand for population, uh, or it could stand for a problem that you have encountered in a clinical scenario um, or in an emergency room or an office. And so when we think about P, what, we, what we're saying is that initially you should determine the appropriate characteristics of either your patient um, or your population, and you really can't determine the characteristics of the problem, so that would be excluded there. And these factors in the P, things that you want to look for and be very descriptive are um, the age of the patient or the population. And so one of the things that you'll see a lot of times is some people will say adolescent students or high school age students or collegiate level students, um, they might say, you know, uh, patients between the ages of 50 and 60 or geriatric patients. So you want to be very specific in terms of describing the age group of your patients. Uh, you also want to include in the P the level of activity. Are they athletic? Are they an elite athlete? Are they an assembly line worker? Are they a weekend warrior? So you really want to include the level of activity. Um, and then you want to also in introduce your condition. So by that, I mean the pathology. So is it patellofemoral pain syndrome? Is it lateral ankle sprains? Is it a reduction in range of motion? Is it a rotator cuff injury? So those are the components to the P. Again, P stands for either population, patient, or problem of interest. We, you really want to describe who your patients are um, or who the population is, and then or you want to describe what the problem is when you're thinking about the P. And so that's going to include the age group. That's going to include level of activity if that is a piece of it or a component of your question. And last but not least, you want to include the condition. What really sparked your clinical question? So that's the P. Now we're going to move on to the I. The I in the PICO process stands for the intervention. Um, and some, some would say exposure. Um, and so this is basically what you are going to do with your patient and or population or what you're going to use to solve that clinical problem. And so once the patient details have been established, once the P has been established, it then becomes very important to determine the primary intervention that you're considering using for this particular population and or patient group. While the intervention of choice may vary greatly from one condition or person to the next, we will continue to use a specific clinical example when we get to our clinical case study. But again, the I in the PICO really stands for the intervention um, and or 
treatment that you want to use to solve your clinical problem um, and or case study. So the P we said was patient. The I we said was the intervention or the treatment that you plan to use to solve the problem. And then next we move on to, to the C. And the C stands for comparison. So you really want to have um, either a comparison group um, or what we would call is a comparison intervention or treatment. And traditionally speaking, this is going to be usually maybe it would be the gold standard or the treatment that you've been using in your clinic, but you're not seeing patients get better. Um, and so with the C, we need either a comparison group um, or a comparison intervention. It really truly just depends. And this will become clearer as we go through our clinical case study in just a moment. And last but not least, we have the O, which stands for the out, outcome, right? So this is the last step of forming your clinical question. It's going to involve determining the outcomes you hope to achieve with your, your intervention. Um, and so the outcome should relate to the demographics in, in, in the first cell, or what we would say is in the P, right? In the population, patient, or problem of interest. And so outcomes could be something like you want to reduce pain, you want to improve range of motion, you want to improve quality of life, right? And so basically when we say outcomes, what we're saying is what happened when we intervened or when we performed that treatment? Um, what was the outcome when we just did stretching or when we did manual therapy? What, what was the outcome? And so you always should have an outcome of interest when you're forming a clinical question. So if we look at the PICO overall, we would say, okay, we need a patient population. We should at least have a desired intervention. Um, we should have something to compare that intervention against. Um, this is sometimes not always the case. Some people just want to intervene and they don't have a comparison. Then last but not least, we have to have an outcome measure. What about the clinical question truly made us ask it. Was it that our patients weren't getting better, their pain wasn't reducing, their quality of life wasn't, wasn't improving? And then so that becomes your outcome of measure as you intervene. So PICO, patient, intervention, comparison, and the outcome measure. For those of you moving on to either medical school um, or physical therapy school, maybe graduate school in athletic training, um, you will also see PICO with a T. Um, and if you see that um, or you encounter that, that really that T stands for time. And so uh, how many months are you going to do the treatment for? How many weeks or how many days? And so basically you would add a time component to that. So we could say, um, in patients with ankle sprain, does it take one week to improve pain um, following an ankle sprain? So that would be the time, the time component would be the week. You don't have to include this in your PICO question, but for some um, outcomes and or interventions, time becomes an important factor. And so I just wanted to add that into this online lecture. So I've given you the components to PICO. It's, again, it's going to be patient population, which could be characteristics and or health issues, which would be the problem. It's going to be the intervention that you are so choosing to use to improve your patient outcomes. You're gonna have some sort of either comparison group or comparison treatment. Um, and then last but not least, we want to really truly know what the what your goal of, of really using the intervention was? Is it to reduce pain? Is it to improve patient symptoms? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a clinical question. We're gonna design a clinical question based on a case study that I've created. And so the case study is going to be um, an ankle sprain patient with a dorsiflexion range of motion deficit. They come into your clinic um, and they want to know if manual therapy would be a better treatment um, than stretching of the gastrocnemius um, to restore dorsiflexion range of motion and to return, return to normal activities. And so just as a patient history, this patient has uh, sprained their ankle about four weeks ago um, and their clinician has been stretching uh, the gastrocnemius in hopes that they would improve dorsiflexion range of motion. But after four weeks, your patient still has about a five degree dorsiflexion range of motion deficit when compared to the other side. Your patient went into the research literature and they saw that sometimes manual therapy or joint mobilizations are also a tool that can be used to improve um, range of motion. And so they're asking you the question, you know, can we change our treatment paradigm? We've been stretching for four weeks and not getting better. 
Is manual therapy something that we could use potentially? Is it a different treatment approach that could improve my outcomes? So as we're forming this question, I just wanna review again. We're going to be keeping a few things in mind. Who is the patient population? Uh, what are their characteristics if they were described in the case study? What intervention are they asking us to try? What have they been doing? Um, and then what is our outcome of interest, right? And so that's what we're gonna do on this next slide. So again, just as a reminder, we have a 20 year old ankle sprain patient um, with a dorsiflexion range of motion deficit. They come into our clinic and they wanna know if manual therapy would be a better treatment than stretching to restore dorsiflexion range of motion and return, return to normal activities. And so let's dissect this question. The first thing that we have to identify is the patient and or the problem. In this case, the patient is a 20 year old ankle sprain patient. We could also say or identify the problem and say that the problem is that what? They have a dorsiflexion range of motion deficit, right? So we have identified the patient, we've identified the problem. The next component would be to identify the intervention. In this case, the intervention or the new treatment is going to be manual therapy. The comparison group would be the stretching or the comparison would be the stretching. And then our outcome really truly would be whether or not there's restoration in dorsiflexion range of motion after a bout of manual therapy. And so based on the P that we've identified, the I, which is manual therapy, the C, which is the stretching, and then the O, which is you know whether or not dorsiflexion range of motion improves, how can we create a well-focused clinical question? And there are several different qu clinical questions that can arise from this, but I've taken a stab at it, and here's what I've said. In patients with dorsiflexion restrictions following ankle sprain, is manual therapy more effective at restoring range of motion when compared to gastrocnemia stretching, right? And so what, what, what is my problem? My problem or my P is that there are patients who have dorsiflexion range of motion restrictions. My I, the intervention, is whether or not manual therapy, C, is going to be more effective at restoring, right, um, at restoring range of motion, which would be my O, um, when compared to gastrocnemia stretching alone. So my C would be the gastrocnemia stretching. So can you see how we've taken a clinical scenario here and we've turned it into a well-focused clinical question? Now, you could probably create an even better clinical question based on the clinical question on the previous slide. So what I want you to do for your homework assignment is to um, bring in a clinical question that you formed based on the clinical scenario in this particular online lecture. Uh, so where do we go from here? Uh, what we know about evidence-based practice is that in re truly to really help answer clinical questions, you have to really use the PICO format. The PICO format was designed because it creates, it allows you to develop a clinical question with four constructs. And so when I start with my clinical question, I literally just list a P, I, C, and O, and then I write out my four variables or my my p my i my c and o and then i form my clinical question after i've i know what my p i c and o are um, and so my recommendation number one is to truly start thinking about your critical appraisal topic what is it what problem or patient or population are you interested in what intervention would you maybe want to research to see if it's effective and then what comparison do you want to use in your research as well? And then what outcome are you looking at? Decrease pain, improve range of motion, um, improve quality of life. What is the outcome that you really truly want to know um, what will impact your clinical practice?